creating your first MVC app. We shall get introduced to the MVC framework with the creation of a beginning MVC app. This app shall display the message hello world on the screen. We shall become introduced to the various folders that are relevant to MVC and which are created in the solution explorer. We shall follow a step by step approach. So walk with me. Let us see how to create our first MVC app. You should open your Visual Studio Express and this should be the starting screen that becomes available to you. So follow these steps. File New Project Here you should have selected Visual C Sharp by default, Visual Basic is selected. You should select Visual C Sharp. And then you should select Web. I repeat. Don't do this. Do this. Then here you will find a number of options. You should select. So I am giving my MVC application. By default, it will be saved in your My Documents folder. There is subfolder Visual Studio 2012 and Projects. So this is the path where this project will be saved. Then we can click OK and when you click OK you will find a dialog box like this. You will find an empty template, you will find a basic template, internet application, intranet, web API. You may or may not find these others depending on the configuration. So what is an empty? An empty MVC app will create just a bare bones, very little startup code. You will do this at a later stage. This won't be done today. Then there is internet application. Internet application has a default authentication built into it. It will authenticate with Forms authentication. Otherwise, it is exactly same as basic. Similarly, intranet. Intranet will be exactly same as basic, except that the authentication will be Windows authentication. So the difference is only of the authentication. Whereas in basic, no authentication will be built into it. You are free to use your own authentication rules. Basic is not really very basic because it contains some code in it. That code is the fundamental code that is required, that is always required to be present in a startup MVC application. We will study each and everything in the basic application as we go. Web API A web API application creates a suitable structure for a web access to through MVC. We shall cover it in the last part of our course. So today, since it's our first exercise, it's, it's our first day, we shall start with the basic MVC application. Okay, let us see and let us see the various structures inside it. 
Then there is another thing. View engine. We shall be following the Razer view engine throughout because it is the latest one and therefore you should select Razer here. This one is create a unit test project. It is required for testing. We shall cover this testing towards the last part of our course because at that time you will be able to understand many things. So do not tick mark it because it will create unnecessary junk code for you and it will make understanding difficult. So if we mark the steps first basic, second razor and third click on OK. After some time you might find a screen like this. Toolbox is likely to be there. If it is there, you can close it. Not required. Properties. Not required right now. Close them. You will need Solution Explorer. If you do not find it there, you should go to View Solution Explorer and it will become active. You can use this one to pin it. It won't hide. It won't auto hide. Click again and it is unpinned. So it will remain folded towards the right. Click on Solution Explorer and let us see what are the various parts. Pinning it. This in bold is the name of your project. Solution Explorer contains a tree of all the folders and files in your project. What are the important folders in this project? App data, same as in ASP.NET databases. It will hold your databases. You can use my you can use SQL Express. Then app start folder. This folder contains startup code. This folder is actually an extension of global.asax file of ASP.NET. So you will do this today. This global.asx file contains a code which actually reaches into this app underscore start file. We will discuss it today. Then there is a content folder. This is used for containing JavaScript, CSS files and maybe images also. Controllers. This is the most important folder of MVC. As we told you in the previous lecture that URLs contain references to class function and parameters. This controllers folder contains the class which is mapped from the URL. You will always work with this folder controllers. Since this is a basic app, these folders have already been created for you. Had we not created basic app, had we created the empty one, then these folders would not have been created. So that's the only difference there. Then you have the models. 
This folder contains database connectivity code or we can say database classes. We'll use it in later lectures. When we do entity framework, so it is related to the database classes. Then there is a scripts folder. Additional JS files can be placed in this also. jQuery and the like files are placed in the scripts folder. It already contains something for you. You can add even more jQuery files or plugins to this folder. JS and CSS basically contain your own written JS and CSS files. And in some cases it might also contain themes that you may have written, the themes for your website. So those all are possible in the content folder whereas scripts will contain jQuery plugin or any miscellaneous JS files. Then we have the views folder. This folder is supposed to contain your CS HTML files. That is they basically contain your HTML code. So when the user clicks on the controllers, uh, when the user uh, types something in the browser, a class in the controllers is called which might communicate with the models and then communicates with the views and returns the completed HTML to the caller. And then you have the global.asx file. This file as we know from ASP.NET contains the startup code of your website, packages for installation, web.config as we know from ASP.NET, same role here. So let us now click on each of them to see where we are. Controllers empty, models empty, scripts contains all your jQuery files, fold it back. Content, it contains themes or site CSS relevant to your website. It might contain images and in this case CSS files related to the jQuery, so they are all placed here. We will hardly be worried about this content. Let us now to begin with, this views will also contain some code for you, but today we will not worry about this. Keep it folded because as we discussed in our first lecture, views and models will enter at a later stage. We shall be only working with the controllers in the beginning. So our journey starts with global.asx file. Let us have a look at it, what it contains. Double click it. Folding it. Let us study the contents of this file one by one. This is application, uh, this is public class MVC application. So this is your application class that is uh, responsible for running your application for your MVC application. When your app starts, this is the first function that is called application underscore start. Same as from ASP.NET. Area, uh, area registration dot register all areas don't worry about this today. We'll talk about it later. Web API config. This we don't have to worry about today. Because this is for the web API. When we'll be talking about the web APIs for MVC, then we'll talk about this. Filter config. 
nothing to do today bundle config talk we'll talk about it later but not today this is the line that you should you should try to understand today it says root config dot register roots root table dot roots register roots is a static function of root config class and it does root registration in nutshell root registration what is root registration user is typing something into the browser xyz by abc by 1 this is what he types into the browser root registration is laying the rules writing the rules on which this url maps to controller classes and its functions that is how to interpret what is where whether xyz is the name of the function whether abc is the name of the class whether it is the parameter or xyz is the name of the class abc is a function one is a parameter so what part is what this is called root mapping registration these rules are established by you because it's your app and whatever the user is typing has to inter be interpreted by you so what this code is doing is it is doing root registration it is telling the rules the rules about what is what part of the url is going to be the name of the class what part is going to be the name of the function and what part is going to be the parameters let us now track this it it says root table dot roots root config dot register roots root config where is this class to understand it better let us see where is this class come to the solution explorer pin it i told you app underscore start is an extension of global dot asx dot cs click this corresponding to these four lines you will find four cs files web api filter config root config bundle config so app underscore start is a direct extension of global dot asx dot cs file and today we are not exploring this not exploring this we are worried about this one let us click here and reach this file to see what it contains coming back to root uh, global.asx this is root config dot register roots so click here fold it back this is the root config class inside it there is a static function which is being called from there and what are this line you ignore today don't worry about this one this is for proper working of mbc otherwise it confuses with asp.net so this is confusion resolution we can talk about it later here it says roots dot map root the functional part is this 
This is the functional part. Let us try to understand it practically. It says It says the root is called default. You could have written your name also. Name doesn't matter here. The name of the root is default. And the URL is controller by action by ID. Now this says that you are inside the URL. This is a placeholder controller. This says that the first part of the URL will be the controller class. This is a symbolic form in which it has been written. Controller. The second part will be action. Action method. And the third part will be IT, a parameter. So if somebody is typing ABC, uh, this might confuse you, somebody is typing home by index by 5, then as per this rule, it means home is the name of the class index is name of the function inside the class and 5 is a parameter argument that is uh, is a parameter passed to that class the, to that function in mbc controller is called a class controller is the is a controller class action is a method and id is a parameter throughout mbc classes will be called controllers Methods in them will be called actions and parameters you can call anything. It's hardly any hard coding. This controller and action are standard words in MBC. So here it says that the URL will be identified as controller by action by ID. And there are certain default values written here. Default is that controller will be home, action will be index and id will be optional. This means if the user types hoven.in and leaves everything else, then it will be assumed that it is typed as home by index. So it will be assumed that the user has typed slash home slash index. Because default value of the controller is home. The default value of action is index. If the user types hoven.in by home, then it will be assumed that he has typed by index. So this is what you should be clear about. Roots.map root, any name. These are the parts of the URL and these are the defaults. Controller is home, action is index, ID is optional. So if ID is given, it is okay. If it is not given, then also it is okay. If it is given, it will be processed. If it is not given, it will be ignored. Now you might be wondering about what this is name colon URL colon defaults colon. Actually these are are named parameters feature of AS C sharp named args feature so what this actually means is you could have written it like this also remove it delete it delete it 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 same thing but but what it, it is actually see here if i click backspace and try to type the you will see string name this argument is called parameter is name parameter is url and parameter is defaults so it has actually put on colons to give them names to tell which is which argument so here if you see 
it is defaults it is url it is name you can re-verify so these are named arguments basically this name url and defaults so this is alternate way of passing arguments to a function you are basically calling the function called map root next what is now this new controller home this you might be worried about this is something new for you these are called dynamic objects we'll talk about them as we go today we are not taking it up but we'll talk about them as we go so for you you can just take it that here it means that the controller value is home action value is index and id is optional okay so if you understand this this means this is a routing method this is a mapping of the url ke what part maps to what okay let us now begin by writing our first mpc application pin this right click on the controllers add controller add controller it opens a dialog and says default one controller you see it has not done this but it has done this this means you will not be erasing the controller you will be erasing the default one if you want to give another name i am removing it and writing it as home controller so all my classes all my controller classes in mbc they should end in the controller phrase they will end in controller its name is home controller but it is called home controller home it's written as home controller but it is called home mbc understands it to be home controller if you do not end it in controller mbc will not work correctly so every controller we are giving it a home controller because here it is a default value so it will be easy for us don't select any template choose defaults click add this is the class that has been added for you this is any normal class and this is inheriting from a ready made class called controller it all controllers will inherit from this class class name is home controller it contains a function called index it returns action result don't worry about it what it is today just replace it with string we'll talk about action results later return view don't worry about this just write hello world here so let me rewrite it correctly i'll change it to string and i'll change it to hello world so what i have added to my controllers folder is a class called home controller its name ends with controller and it contains a function called index so this is called this is called home and this is called index so i'll write this is called home controller and this is called index action so if the user types nothing in the address bar then this function should be called let us verify it build build solution and start it 
So the user hasn't typed anything. It is just HTTP localhost by. And the hello world string is available on the top. Actually, it was interpreted as localhost 1036 slash home slash index. It actually mapped to a class called home and then method called index and it executed this method and whatever it returned has been shown you on the screen. So I hope now you are clear about your first MVC application. So I'll give you a small exercise. You can now try doing this. An MVC app that displays your name. You should try to do all the steps and that will give you the starting exercise. In our next lecture, we shall talk about detailed examples of URL routing. We shall add a lot of code and let us see uh, whether we are able to uh, display our name today or not. Thanks.